Hey folks, well, as you can see, those tomatoes that we planted in our raised beds in chopped leaves are doing pretty good. Now nah, they're doing a little too good, I guess. They, they've hit the top of the hoop house and it's only July yet. Getting towards the end of July, but <laughs> we're starting to get some tomatoes ripen on the bottoms now and, and that's a good sign because we're gonna have a lot of tomatoes but what I need to do now is fertilize them and by fertilize I mean add some chopped leaves that's all we're going to do I have done nothing to these tomatoes since we transplanted them in this raised bed or these raised beds nothing but water them with rainwater from our rain barrels. That's all I've done. And check that moisture, keep the worms happy. But now the layer of chopped leaves is getting a little sparse in there. The, the worms and other decomposers have decomposed a lot of those chopped leaves down to the point where I'd like to add some more to get them through the next month and a half before we have a, a killing frost. So I'm going to show you how we do that. If you've watched my other videos on how we chop our leaves, you'd know that we use a rear bagger on a mulching mower, just a walk behind mower as one of our methods. The other one, I use the string trimmer inside a trash can. That's for folks who maybe have a smaller lot and don't have a, a mower like this or want to do a smaller quantity. That works too. Kind of hard on the string. So we have this, so I'm going to use it. So what I have here is, is a bag of last year's, last fall's leaves. Now we have, oh, I don't know, 10 or more left. So, you can never have too many leaves, save them. So, what we're going to do is just dump them out on the grass here. Kick them around. And fire this thing up. take long to fill a bag with chopped leaves. Now it's starting to spit them out, so I think it's trying to tell me that it's getting kind of full. Yep. Okay. So we'll shut that thing off, and then I got a tub over here. This goes in, comes in handy for going inside the hoop house. Uh, it's full to the brim here. So I'm just gonna fill this and let's go back in the hoop house. Now, one nice thing about chopped leaves, and these could have been chopped a little better, but you know, again, the bag was getting kind of full. You can see we're getting some ripe tomatoes. Now these are uh, these are beauties. We have some in there softball size. But the nice thing about chopped leaves is you can kind of scrunch them together with your fist, and then just stick stick your hand in there and then just release it. Scrunch it together. Stick your hand in between the stems, and then just release your your load and uh, yeah <laughs> oh yeah I know a little bit uh, a little bit too much 
But we're going to go around the whole bed and do that with all these chopped leaves. And then maybe we'll go uh, fertilize some other raised beds outside the hot hoop house. I imagine just about everything in here could stand to, to have some more chopped leaves added to them. But let's see, I'll go around the electric fence here. Some beans could use some more chopped leaves. Oh, while I have you here, this is just another interesting trellising idea. Okay, so just like we did in the hoop house with the tomato plants, you just grab a good pinch, a good fistful of, of chopped leaves, and then with your, your hands, you can just kind of snake it between the plants and then just work it in, in and amongst them. See potato plants that were volunteers last year? We had potatoes in here and they just came up on their own and I thought, oh well, it's, they're not hurting anything, I guess. So we'll get some more potatoes. I'll show you our potatoes when we're done here too. Okay, so you get the idea. It's just pinching that, that clump of, of chopped leaves makes it so easy to get in there and, and kind of strategically place it between the plants. So I'll probably hit the Swiss chard and the beets and this uh, popcorn over here. I don't know if I'll add more to that or not. Let's go look at those potatoes that we grew this year in chopped leaves. So these are those Pontiac Reds and then those were those Purple Majesties that I wasn't too pleased with and they, they were uh, kind of sparse. They didn't, I, I can see there's potatoes in there. But I haven't harvested any of these yet. And as you can see, the, the foliage is starting to die back. They flowered. They didn't really all flower, but some of them did. But that's been a while and it's starting to die back. So these are, I don't know exactly when the best time is to dig them for storage, to thicken the skins up. But now's the time of year we start sneaking in and kind of like an Easter egg hunt, sneaking in and and robbing some, so we haven't picked any yet, but I'll see, see if I can find, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know how many we'll get, but, oh, these are good. New red potatoes, grown in chopped leaves. Well, grown in soil with chopped leaves on top of them. So some of you are probably thinking, yeah, you know, the guy goes on and on about chopped leaves and growing in a living soil and all that, but we don't have any leaves. What do we do? Well, we didn't used to use leaves. We, were, we almost exclusively for years and years used this. We used grass clippings. And you know, it just became more of a mulch between the rows to reduce weeding. The stuff is, there's not much to it. It's kind of poof and it's gone. It's kind of like you throw it on the soil and you know, it's kind of like burning a Kleenex or something. All of a sudden, poof, it's gone. So it's not nearly as good as far as we're concerned as chopped leaves, but it's certainly better than nothing. So if you didn't save your leaves from last fall, or you don't live in a place where you have an abundance of leaves, use grass clippings. It makes a lot of difference and certainly will reduce your weeding and will add some nutrition. It'll give some nourishment to the decomposers in that soil and it'll help create a living soil. Now we did it before the forest taught us how to become a better gardener. And what I did this spring is I went out with a shovel and I went in into our forest. And everywhere I dug a hole, I would find earthworms. And I would also find a nice, rich humus. 
layer and deep organic soil. And then I went out into our pasture where all I do is mow it once a year. We don't have any livestock on it anymore, the back pasture. And I dig down, it was just sand. And really not much of an organic layer. And I could not find an earthworm out there. So the forests have taught us the value of chopped leaves as the fuel for the invertebrates, for the decomposers that create for us a living soil. So until next time, this is Mark again with Backwood Basics. And let's get through this summer together. And as a nation, as gardeners, as a community, let's grow together. <laughs>